into the word. Father, I glorify your name. I give you praise, Jesus. Once again, we thank you for this privilege, this pleasure, this opportunity to minister your word. As always, dear God, we thank you for you sent your word to heal and to deliver. Now, Lord God, as I minister your word, as always, allow me to speak with holy boldness, but always with compassion. And Lord, I thank you for the anointing that continue to rest on this ministry. Thank you that burdens are lifted, yokes are destroyed, lives are changed. And I thank you, Jesus, that you continue to confirm your word with signs, wonders, and miracles. And the greatest miracle of them all is someone wants to be saved. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. I believe. <laughs> the authority of the believer. The authority of the believer. Look at somebody and ask them, say, are you a believer? Are you a believer? Well, tell them the Lord has given you authority. The Lord has given you authority. Yes. Amen. Amen. If you are a believer, the Lord has given you authority. Yes. Now, we've already established uh, when this all began, when God gave uh, Adam authority, when he made him. Yes. That's the very beginning. Matter of fact, let's quickly go there. Genesis, the first chapter. First chapter of Genesis, verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion. See, that, that was a command. That wasn't asking. Let's see if they want to have dominion. Say, let them have it. I'm giving it to them. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over, over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And we've, we understand that we have equal authority, men and women. And verse 28, and God blessed them. Yes. How'd he do it? God said unto them, be fruitful. That's a command. Yeah. Yeah. Multiply, replenish the earth, and subdue it, yes. or to have control, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. In other words, God is... What he already established, when, when we make man, he's go, we're going to let him have dominion. Yes. So when God makes him, now he's telling him, this is what you're going to do. Yes. Yes. I'm putting this in you. Yes. And God said, behold, every, uh, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree. Because we know that's during the creation, the earlier part of, of Genesis 1. And that which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed unto you, it shall be for meat or for provision. Yeah. In the Living Bible, it says it like this. God said, let us make a man, someone like ourselves, Glory to be the master of all life upon the earth. Yeah. 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 Wow. Mm -hmm. And God blessed them and told them, multiply. Fill the earth, subdue it. You are masters. I'll hold it right there. Now, for the most part, I know many of us, we've, we've read this. Many of us, we, we, we've heard this for years. But I still believe that many have still missed what God actually did when he made us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, first of all, we read it. You see, who and how God made us is like no other. It's like no other or anything he's ever done. In other words, out of everything that God made or created, nothing or no one was ever made after his image and after his likeness. 
not even the angels. You know, that's why Hollywood paints this picture, you know, that when a person dies, they go up looking like angels. That ain't nowhere in the Bible. Angels are angels. You ain't going to be no angel. That's not in the Bible. That's, that's, that's Hollywood script. That ain't holy word script. So we're the only thing that, that were made after the image and the likeness of God. Repeat this after me. God made me like him. That, that, that's a self-esteem booster right there, you know. God, God made me like him. I'll take it a step further. You can make note of this in Genesis 2 and 7 when it says, And the Lord God formed. Formed. That's even a difference right there. There are things he made, but then he forms. Man, of the dust of the ground. And breathe into his nostrils the breath of life or he breathed eternity. Yeah, yeah. That's why spirit never dies. Yeah, yeah. And then man became a living soul or the actual translation man became another speaking spirit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Another speaking spirit just like God. Look at somebody and say hello speaking spirit. Hello. <laughs> See, keep in mind, we were made after the image and the likeness of God. This is even why there's power in the words you say. And I've taught this for some time that really the initial intent or purpose of words was the first to create, then to communicate. The initial purpose of his words was not to communicate, but to create. Yes. Yes. Create, then communicate. Yes. And to be honest, the bulk of your dominion over the earth is going to come through your words. Ecclesiastes 8 and 4 says, where the word of a king is, there is power. Job 22 and 28 says, thou shalt decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee. In other words, when I decree something, because of the authority that I've been given, <clears throat> what I decree is now established. What does that look like? When you decree health to your body. Your healthy body is now established. When I decree prosperity over my life, then prosperity has now been established in my life. Jesus even said in what, Mark uh, uh, eleven twenty three 23, that you can speak to mountains to be removed. And remember what God even uh, 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 tell, told Abraham, according to Romans 4, 17. Yeah. Abraham, call things yeah. that be not as though they were. Yeah. So the bulk of your authority yeah. is going to come through words. Yeah. 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 Because you are another speaking spirit. And I can go on and on with that. But see, you've got to understand that you're a speaking spirit like God, and you have authority in your mouth. You have authority in your mouth. Really? Well, that's all right. even why Proverbs, what, 18, uh, 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 21 says, even death and life is in the power of not the doctors. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. But death and life are in the power of your tongue. Yeah. 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 In other words, I can speak life to situations or I can speak death to situations. Yeah. Yeah. 
because I'm another speaking spirit like God. Now, that's where it all began. Let's fast forward to the church. Let's go to Mark 16, 16 chapter of Mark. Beginning at verse 15, many of us know this. And Jesus said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Then verse 17, and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils, and they shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere. And the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs. Now, once again, when we read this, who are these signs for? It's for the believer. For the believer. These signs are demonstrations of God's power. That he's delegated to every born again believer. Yeah, 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 yeah. A couple other translations says it like this. And the people who believe will be able to do these things as proof. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They will use my name to force demons out of people. They will speak in languages they never learn. And if they pick up snakes or drink any poison, they will not be hurt. They will lay their hands on sick people and they will get well. Another translation says, and these miracle signs will accompany those who believe. They will drive out demons in the power of my name. They will speak in tongues. They will be supernaturally protected from snakes and from drinking anything poisonous. They will lay hands on the sick and heal them. Yeah, right. yeah. Now the translation says these are the miraculous signs mm. that will accompany believers. Mm. They will use the power and authority of my name mm. to force demons out of people. Yeah. They will speak new languages. Oh, yeah. They will pick up snakes and if they drink any deadly poison it will not hurt them. Yeah. They will place their hands on the sick yeah. and cure them. Now, before I get into the manifested signs, question, what gives us the authority to exercise these miracles? The name of Jesus. See, in other words, everything begins and is done in the name of Jesus. Keep your finger on that, that mark. Quickly go to Colossians 3.17. Colossians 3.17. I got to move quick. Colossians 3.17 says, and whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. One translation says, let every activity of your lives and every word that comes from your lips be drenched with the beauty of our Lord Jesus, the anointed one, and bring your constant praise to God the Father because of what Christ has done for you. Now the translation says, whatever you do, no matter what it is, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus. Wow. You see, not only is that a command, but there's a reason for that. Let's quickly go to Philippians 2, 2 and 9. Philippians, the second chapter, verse 9. Now, this is, this is very, very important. Second chapter, Philippians, verse 9 says, Wherefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him a name <clears throat> which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven, and things in earth and things under the earth. 
and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Now, you know I got to give you another translation. Because I understand everybody don't understand King James. We're not in England. We're in Chicago. <laughs> it says because of that obedience, God exalted him and multiplied his greatness. He has now been given the greatest of all names. The authority of the name of Jesus causes every knee to bow in reverence. Everything and everyone will submit to this name in the heavenly realm, in the earthly realm, and even in the demonic realm. So now, can we all agree that there's supernatural, abundant power in the name of Jesus? See, you ask anywhere in the church, is there, is there a power in the name of Jesus? Yeah! Yes, 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 Question. Yes, yes. Do we really believe it? We sing songs about there's something about that yeah, name. Yeah. See, we all say there's, there's power in the name. Yeah. But do we really believe it? You see, if you don't have faith in the name, yes. then how can you have faith in exercising these miraculous signs? Yes. All right, let's go back to Mark 16. I said, put your finger on it. Let's go right back to it. Or, or tap it back in to your tab or whatever. Mark 16, 17 again. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. Another translation says, these are the miraculous signs that will accompany believers. They will use the power and authority of my name force out demons out of people. They will speak with new language. They will pick up snakes. And if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. They will place their hands on the sick and cure them. Now, do you believe in the power and the authority that's in the name of Jesus? See, because if you really do, if you really, really do, I'm not talking about from a religious standpoint. Yeah, yeah. But if we really, really believe then you'll only use it when you're expecting a miraculous manifestation from God. You see, the name of Jesus is not just something you say at the end of a prayer. You know, and so on, so on. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, my. Okay. See, it, it, it's, it's not even a name you, you call on hoping something happens. But you see, it's the only name you use expecting. The miraculous to happen. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, that's what I said. Do we really believe mm, mm, mm. the power and the authority in the name? Yes. Mm, mm. See, because if we really believe it, we'd only use it mm. when we expect miracles, All right. mm. supernatural moves. Hmm. So now, if I have faith in the name, so then, then as a believer, I can cast out devils. That's part of your authority. We know according to Ephesians 4.27, we're told, really it's a command, give no place to the devil. In other words, don't give him a place. Don't, don't give him an opportunity, physically, mentally, or spiritually. 
In other words, you have authority to shut his power down wherever you see him in operation. You have authority yeah. to, to, to shut his power down wherever you see it in operation. Yeah. 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 Now, I ain't going to get into that because I already dealt with, with, with that in the previous lessons. So now, what else? In my name, you shall speak with new tongues. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we went into it, I think, last week. That goes beyond uh, uh, Pentecost and Acts 2. And yes, we understand every believer shall speak with new or unlearned uh, uh, tongues when you're filled with the Holy Spirit. Have no problem with that. That's biblical. I've taught it for many, many years, and I still believe in speaking in other tongues. But we've got to also remember this. Never limit the evidence of being filled or being spirit-filled with the purpose of being spirit-filled. Yes. Yeah. See, because, you know, I, I've been in this. I was thinking about it the other day. I've been saved 40 years. You know, and I've seen a lot, especially I love my Pentecostal brothers. But we, we don't limit the evidence over the purpose. Because yeah, yeah. Acts 1 and 8 says, here's the purpose. You shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. For what reason? So you can be a witness. Unto me, both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. In other words, the purpose is to receive witnessing power. This is part of your authority. Witnessing power. Supernatural demonstrations. In Chicago, in Mississippi, California, and all around the world. Now remember, these signs, they follow the believer. In other words, where I go, the signs go with me. See, see in the church world, we got to be careful. Everything just in here. See, I get to a point where you shouldn't be exercising the signs over each other. See, if it follows me, so wherever I go, the signs go with me. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Yes. Amen. You know, this, 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 this is why I tell sometimes some people, and, and, and as I said, 40 years, and I grew up in this, and I'm sure Apostle Morris knows, you know, you can have, you know, preachers, everybody be waiting for their spot. Mm -hmm. It ain't no spot. If your goal in life is to be up here on the stage, buy you one. Go ahead. <laughs> see, the sign, see, see, it ain't all about in here. Yeah, yeah. Where I show up at my job, on my neighborhood, in the schoolhouse, wherever it is, where I show up, the signs follow me. Oh, thank you, Lord. So now, wherever I go, the signs go with me. Then I also mention new tongues is not limited, yes. but even but as a believer, you have a new language of authority. Yes. I mentioned it earlier. You can decree a thing. You can speak to mountains. Death and life is in the power of your tongue. And I ain't going to get in that. Once again, I dealt with that in the previous lesson. You need to get the, the CDs or look at that again at Facebook or YouTube. <laughs> Man. Now, I want to quickly deal with these last three signs of the authority of the believer. Verse 18, we're back in Mark 16. Verse 18 says, they shall take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Now, let me quickly deal with this taking up serpents. And let me quickly give you some biblical background to what that means. It says the word serpents is the Greek word ophis, 
which was used to depict snakes. Snakes were considered to be dangerous and life-threatening creatures. People were especially afraid of snakes because the road system at this time was very much underdeveloped. This meant people often had to blaze their own way to get to other cities or remote places and hiding in the rocks or grass were dangerous, poisonous snakes that frequently bit travelers, causing premature death. These snakes were a concern to all travelers, especially to those traveling by foot. In Luke 10, 19, Jesus said, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all power of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. So when Jesus uttered these words, it was right after he commanded them to go into the harvest fields of the world to reap souls of men. This verse was Jesus supernaturally guaranteeing that when they went to preach that they would have divine protection against the serpents and scorpions and anything else the enemy might try to use to stop or hurt them. This is why Jesus said nothing shall by any means hurt you. I'm giving you background and we're going we're gonna to modernize it to 2022. But it says, but notice in addition to serpents, Jesus also mentioned scorpions. The scorpions in the Middle East were extremely feared because they were loaded with deadly poison. One sting from the tail of such a scorpion and a person could be permanently paralyzed or even killed. So when people took journeys by foot, they didn't have no Uber. So when people <laughs> took journeys by foot, the prospect of encountering a scorpion was just as scary as the thought of snakes because scorpions hid in the rocks and in the roads. Therefore, sitting on the wrong rock or accidentally stepping on the wrong spot could result in a disaster. So in other words, people, when they were traveling, they were like, whoa. See we, we, see, we used to grass and pavement and all of that. Go ahead. Go ahead, Go ahead. Go ahead. See, some folks of a certain age who were down south and said, no, no grass, no, no grass. Go ahead. Then it says, Jesus promised his disciples that they would tread upon serpents and scorpions. And what's important here, this word tread in the Greek is patel, which means to walk. So Jesus was telling them that even if they walked right over a scorpion or a snake, they didn't need to worry because he was giving them special supernatural protection against these dangers. To make sure the concerns of all travelers were completely covered, Jesus added, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now, this word nothing or this word hurt is the Greek word adakil, which means to suffer injustice or to suffer some kind of wrong or wrongdoing. Yeah, yeah. So this was the Lord's promise that we need not to fear. Don't fear injustice or wrongdoing when we've been sit, sent into the harvest. So he says nothing shall by any means. Nothing, yeah. nothing, nothing by no means will injure or harm you. Yeah. Yeah. So now Jesus gives his disciples supernatural protection because he was sending them to preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. And things that would normally injure or kill others would have no effect on them. Yeah. 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 Amen. Some of y'all slept on it. Things that would normally injure or kill others would have no effect on them. Wow. So basically this divine protection was so powerful that even if they were to be bitten by a deadly snake, it would have no effect on them. Amen. <clears throat> 
Let me modernize it a little. Even if a deadly virus hits my body, it will not harm me. Well, others, it might. Come on, don't, don't, don't get mad at me. With others, it might. Now, see, this is for believers. Now, when I'm saying believers, you, you got to believe this. <clears throat> oh, my. See, I've learned years ago that any way the enemy manifests himself, you know, anyway, you know, uh, 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 it shall not come near my dwelling. Doesn't matter. Oh, thank you, Jesus. See, this even ties <clears throat> into the next sign. If you drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. Now, notice it doesn't say it shall not kill them. But not even hurt them. Not even hurt them. See, it, it didn't say no. It's good, and that's good. Oh, it's a, it won't, won't kill you. It didn't just say, it didn't say that. Not even hurt them. Okay, I lost some of y'all with that. And the actual meaning here is not just drinking, but it really means to consume something. So basically, we could say, if you consume anything that would normally be fatal, then this fatal substance shall not hurt you. Once again, you got to believe this. Now, let me say what I'm not saying. I'm not saying you just go out and drink poison and go do and get in trouble. That's not what we're saying. But go on your way. You don't have to fear. This to a believer. I know everybody's not a believer. Now, when I'm saying believe, I ain't saying you're not saved. I'm saying believe this. Because these signs follow them that believe. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I don't get no thoughts to, oh, <coughs> what if somebody give you the wrong medicine? So? so. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. See, I lost 90% of y'all with that. See, either we believe this for what it is or we don't. Man, I better wrap it up now, cause that that I, that's all right. You hang with me. You are gonna get there. That's what I'm here for to bring you. And it's a wonderful thing to not live in fear, because you're knowing that you're divinely protected. <laughs> Woo, glory to God. Glory to God. That say if somebody cough, cough and sneeze, I ain't got nothing to do with it. I ain't never like that. Go ahead. Go ahead. You know, because some folks, they breath is a little jacked and all. Hey. Ahead, and when somebody do something, I'll be like, hey. And they're like, oh, they may got they caught something. Oh, I caught that bad breath. Like, hey. I ain't worried about catching nothing from you other than that, that bad breath. You know what I mean? I got to spray some cologne or something, you know. But I'm serious. There are folks that got paranoid. They see somebody coughing. They, they could drunk some water. And they, they, oh. 
They over there sneezing. Oh, the baby powder got got in their nose. That's that's why they sneeze. And you like, oh. So anything consume, it shall not hurt me. Anything that can normally, even anything that, it, and this is what it actually means, anything that would usually make a person sick, it will have no effect on them. That's why we can get caught up going into restaurants. Uh, you don't know what they what they what they doing back there cooking that food. Well, if you ain't glued, you don't know what your wife doing. Come on. Come on. Depending on who you are, your grandmother. No fear. No fear. So anything that could usually make a person sick, it will have no effect on them. Is that possible? Yes. For the believer who believes it. Oh my. Now, I've heard and everybody, whatever, you know, they told me, you know, when you take the vaccine, folks, you feel funny and this and that. And you all know my stuff. We don't take it because we got to do a lot of traveling. Go ahead, Pastor. Go ahead. Yeah, we fine. Perfectly ahead, fine. Go ahead, we had to do it because, you know, they stopped making these little restrictions and I ain't stopping my, you know, I got to get to a Bulls game. Go ahead, you know. Yes. That's just that. And they say, oh, you take, you start feeling funny. Pastor Lord, I took it. Now, I thought I was Iron Man. She Iron Woman. We took that thing, went out, and I went to the gym. I felt like, man, was there steroids in there? Yeah. Then I come back. She, she out there shoveling our, our driveway. Come on, somebody. Yeah. What may normally happen to others don't happen to you if you will believe it. Woo! Glory to God. Ha <laughs> ha! I got to quit. I'm going to pick it up next week. Why are you going to do I'm going to do the lay the hands on the sick and recover because next Sunday is healing and, and deliverance service. So we'll deal exclusive with that next week. God bless every heart. Those of you who have been viewing us and maybe you're saying, Pastor, I've heard the message, but I'm not saved. Pastor, I want to be born again. I want to be in the family of God. If that's you, whoever you are, man, woman, boy, or girl, the scripture says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, thou shall be saved. If this is you, I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Same prayer myself and many others pray similar. Repeat this after me. Say, dear God in heaven, I come to you right now. You know my life. You know how I've lived. I ask you right now to forgive me of my sins. Jesus, come into my life and do something with it. I believe in my heart that you died for me and God raised you from the dead and you are alive right now. Jesus, I thank you that you are now my savior. And you are now my Lord, and I am now your child. I pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. It's all it takes. You prayed that prayer, believed it in your heart. Welcome to the family of God. Praise God. It doesn't stop here. It just begins now. Now, those of you online, if you prayed that prayer, let us know. You can call us or even fill out the information, however it is. We want to send you some stuff, some free stuff. I got a booklet I want to send you free to just encourage you and bless you. And even those of you, if you're no, nowhere in the Chicago land area, anywhere around the world, still let us know. We know many churches around the country that will teach you the word of God 
and take good care of you. Welcome to the family of God. Greatest decision you've ever made. Well, the day is not over. We'll be right back here uh, 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 at this time, 1230 Central Standard Time, lady at our West Side uh, Church, 541 West Lake Street. Anyone near Chicago, West Side, meet me there. Meet me there in, in just a few minutes. Pastor, I'm not ready yet. Oh, get ready. I got to travel. I'm going to be there. So you be there. God bless everybody. We'll see you next time. Come on, let's give God praise. We're not out of work, but we are out of time. We sincerely hope you enjoyed the message that you heard today here at Better Life Faith Church International. If you would like to hear more messages like this, check us out every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. and every first Sunday of the month for our Sunday night live service at 6 p.m. here at our Southside location, 7414 South Cottage Grove in Chicago, Illinois. If you would like more information, resources, or a copy of today's message, go to our website at www.betterlifefaith.org or give us a call at 877-324-8497. Until next time, God bless.